Hi everybody, it's Natalie with Magdalene's Wish. Uh, welcome to my channel. Um, I am coming on today with a message um, that's been popping up and down for me whew, a lot for the past month or, or more, maybe. Um, more than that, I think. Um, and it's a message about a few things. It's about how we see one another, our perceptions of one another as humans and as light workers both um the false narrative the false the not false narrative the false light narrative that we hear in the light worker community um and just how we see one another both as light workers and as humans fellow human beings and really it ends up being about um acceptance forgiveness and unconditional love and where are we not in a place of unconditional love? And just kind of taking a moment to really self-analyze, if you will, our own perceptions, our own judgments, our own fears, um, and where we fall into various categories at various times in our experience, which we all do, because we're all human and we're all learning. So I'm really bringing my um, Sophia through, um, my higher self, her and Yeshua, uh, we've been kind of mingling and talking about this topic, um, on and off for a while. And, um, you know, I've seen it come up in some other people's videos and taught and instructed in one way, which I really appreciated. And then in others in different way and it feels like it's been percolating in me and it's like okay I'm digesting this and now I want to bring this information through kind of with um, how it's filtering through me and my comprehension of it with Sophia and Yeshua Mary Magdalene these energies that I, I work with and that I embody so um, so I guess first I just want to touch on perception and false light narrative and what is that exactly so just to get out of the way the what is um what we call false light um it feels like a dirty word and it feels like a false term um it really does feel like a false term or a false false word um and basically and there might be variances of this i feel like there's a really broad broad spectrum and I feel like perhaps there might be, there may in fact be some legitimate false light out there, but I also feel that the vast majority is all of us being human, shifting through moments of time through our awakening and ascension process. We all know it's a really dirty process. Ascension, awakening, which are two different things. Um, awakening is just awakening to your truth, the truth of the world, who you are on a soul level, um, awakening to maybe false storylines or deceptions, you know, in the world. Um, so awakening is like waking up and smelling the coffee, right? Awakening is a kind of a different term. And we generally experience that in segments throughout our life of something that might activate or trigger a memory of maybe a past life or, um, or just a realization of something is not quite as perfect as we maybe thought it was. So it's awakening to truth or awakening to self. Ascension is going a step further and going up even higher up the ladder and ascending to completely your higher self and becoming pure source energy, pure source light, um, becoming fully your soul self, becoming fully and fully ascended human being where you embody nothing but pure love. That takes a lot of work. On the path to ascension, we go through an awakening. We go through many, many difficult trials, initiations and tests, triggers, attacks, you know, psychic attacks through various means, all kinds of things. We get really dirty, right? Um, we go through dark night of the soul. We experience sadness, depression, disillusionment. Um, we have low days, high days. We might be doing a lot. We might be somebody who does a lot of anchoring or, or um, violet flame work where we're transmuting through our vessel. We might be very empathic and very sensitive to the energies of others or the collective or of 
somebody in our neighborhood or family that we're picking up on their energies and then we become like this magnet or the sponge to the energies of others. So sometimes as we shift through levels or layers of our awakening, we're going through some really beautiful layers and we might be going through some really dirty, murky, mucky ones. And it's like we we climb this ladder or we go through this path and it's not all perfect. It's not all rosy. It's not necessarily all light because during this, we're waking up to our own truth and truth and truth of others. We're doing our own shadow work. We're looking at our own inner demons and fears and illusions and um, where we've been maybe lying to ourselves or in fear or in shame anything that is a false perception of self, anything that is our shadow energy. Um, you know, we might be holding on to all kinds of, you know, baggage of the past. So we go through and we do shadow work and we clear things out, right? We clear and purge trauma that happened before. We clear and purge pain or fears or anger or a past life. We might be clearing and purging for the collective because that's part of our job and mission as a light worker. So we're getting dirty and an analogy that was given to me, um, or a few analogies. One is like when you're, you know, you go outside in the rain and it's storming and you get wet, right? Or when it's the weather is stormy and cloudy. It's not like that all the time. There's a storm moving through and it's windy and it's rainy or it's hailing or whatever it may be. It's, it's the, the weather can get, you know, violent, right? But we know it's not that all the time. Or another analogy is going in the garden and getting dirty or doing some heavy manual labor and you get really dirty, right? And you're in the garden and you got mud and your hair is a mess and you're sweating and you got dirt on your face and maybe you killed a bug on your arm or something or swiped a bug off or, you know, who knows, right? Um, you might have, you know, maybe a thorn, you know, cut you or something. Who knows? But you get kind of muddy and dirty and, and then you come in and you shower and you put some, you know, nice lotion on and you're all good and clean again. Sometimes what we're seeing in people is that snapshot in time when they are dirty in the garden or they're doing some clearing and purging work or they're in their dark night of the soul or maybe they had... Maybe they hold a lot of light and people with a lot of light tend to attract the darkness and get attacked. So, you know, while yes, we clear and shield and protect ourselves and keep our vibration up, those who hold a lot of light are not perfect. They have their days of lower energies, their days of feeling everything, their days of hypersensitivity, their days of struggle maybe with family or finances or with their, you know, their path or anything. It doesn't matter. They might have multiple things in their life that they're experiencing that are really difficult and really challenging and can bring anybody, you know, down. Um, and we have those days. And sometimes during those lows, um, dark energy, you become kind of vulnerable and dark energy likes to say, Ooh, I'm going to get you kind of thing. Um, and that's if our fear is drawing it in. So it all, we have to reframe that in terms of, um, the energy we give out is the energy we attract or the energy we see in ourselves is the energy we see in others. Right? So, you know, when we are in, in lower, you know, having a tough day, having a hard time, um, going through whatever we're going through challenges in our life, which we all have, um, none of us are up in this high energy all the time. If we are, then honestly, I feel like it's, you're poorly grounded. You know, there can be a sense of, um, detachment from, from reality. Um, but some days we have lower days and things, you know, other energies can kind of stick to us a little bit easier. We become more Velcro-y and then we have to clear ourselves, right? So does that make us dark? No. Are we dark? Um, or I say we, does that make anybody dark? Um, I say we speaking of light workers, right? Um, when we are in the garden getting dirty, absolutely not. Um, what Yeshua was explaining to me is that the difference between somebody moving through a segment of their life or their day or whatever it may be 
that is challenging or darker or the dark night of the soul. You know, they're dealing with, you know, maybe alcoholism in the family. Maybe they're dealing with a job loss. Maybe they're dealing with abuse. Maybe suppressed memories of abuse are coming up. We don't know, right? We don't know what they're dealing with consciously or even subconsciously. The subconscious plays a huge role in this too, right? We don't know. So all we know is that maybe that person is, we have a snapshot of them in a certain energy, but we must take a moment to pause and remember that that is a snapshot. Now, granted, we might have multiple snapshots of somebody. Um, again, we don't know where they are on their path or what their path is meant to be experiencing or what factors are um, influencing them. Okay, we don't know. Um, and unless ultimately, unless you're that person and you're in their Akashic rec or you're in their Akashic records and you're their healer um, with permission um, and they're talking and sharing things, you know, with you, then there's no way any of us can truly know and understand what's going on with somebody else, whatever it is that you're perceiving. It doesn't matter whether you're seeing somebody as false light or whether you're seeing them as just um, not in alignment or struggling or um, anything that you feel is like not mm, on the straight and narrow, perfect light kind of thing. Um, and this might be with a light worker, it might be with a family member, it doesn't matter. Really what we're talking about is judgment, perception, and love, and unconditional love. And we kind of have to do this reset to remember what is ascension and awakening all about. And what is unity consciousness about? What is shifting into 5D earth all about? What are we trying to do? What are we here to do? And... We're here to bring love and anchor love, unconditional love, not conditional, not conditional of what you think, what you see, or what you do. It's unconditional across the board, no matter what, no matter what, no matter. That's what ascension, that's what shifting to new earth, that's what unity consciousness is about. And in order to have a successful shift of 5D and, and ascension for the collective, we have to do our own work. We have to embody forgiveness and unconditional love at every moment of the day. It's not easy. It takes work. It takes honesty, integrity, and self-checks a lot. And we all make mistakes and we all screw up because we're all human. But guess what? We get to redeem ourselves and forgive ourselves and everybody else every single time. There is no limit. There is no limit. It's unconditional love, not conditional love. It doesn't mean I will love you if, okay, if you do this or if you say this. I will stop loving you if you make a mistake or if you do this or if you don't do this. If, 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 that's conditional. That's not what we're doing. So in order to shift whatever is dark out there, real or perceived, okay, real or perceived, there is both, okay? Either our temporary walk through a bad day or a bad period of our life or of time, or, you know, um, or it really is somebody who is, struggling with legitimate, you know, darkness. How do we shift into 5D earth and unity consciousness? Take a moment to think about that. What do we actually do? What did Yeshua do in his time, Jesus, to others when they judged him, when they accused him, when they kicked him out of temple? When they were nailing him to the cross, what did he say? I forgive those for they do not know what they do. I forgive. He never held any of those people 
I was going to say accountable. That's not the right word. Um, he never held anger or anguish towards them. He knew it was all part of the plan. He knew they were playing their roles. He knew they didn't understand or if they did that they were having to follow orders because things were as they were. Okay. He saw a bigger picture and he had a huge heart. He does have a huge heart. And that was the other message that came through with this is so much of what I'm seeing in the world, whether it's light workers or not, is really a closed heart or a not a very wide open heart. It's open with safety gates all around it. It's open a little bit, letting in selective. What do I want in? What do I not want in? When our hearts are either closed or only open a little bit to what we say we will allow and not allow, um, our perception does narrow quite a bit of how we see the world and how we see others. Because remember, what we see in others or of the world is really a reflection of what we're seeing in us. So if you look at somebody you, you look up to, and you say, wow, they're really amazing. They have so much light. They're so loving. They're so smart. And I love how articulate they are. And I really hope to be like them. You know, like they really inspire me to do better at my job. You're seeing those things in yourself. When we say they have darkness or false light or they are distorted, they are this, they are that. Somewhere in you is that same thing. Um because we're all mirrors to one another, okay? We are all mirrors. Um, and that's not a bad thing, it's not a judgment, it's just we need to be honest with ourselves and say, hey, self-check, put the mirror in front of ourselves and say, okay, I screwed up here, here, and here, and here. And this is where I was coming from ego, or I was coming, you know, not, I closed my heart and I was being kind of judgmental, and I really shouldn't have said that, you know? Or here are, Here's my shadow. Here's my this, my that. Bring it into light. When you do that, when you acknowledge your own shadow, your own darkness, your own mistakes, you got to humble yourself down. You got to come down and sit down, you know. And then when we do that, we bring light to it and we heal it and soften our heart. When we soften our heart and open our heart, and open it and have forgiveness for ourself and love for ourself and recognize our own mistakes and, and, and misgivings and our own judgments, our own perceptions, our own maybe dishonesty or lack of integrity or whatever it is, um, whatever we, you know, struggle with. We forgive ourselves. We say, you know, whatever we were going through and experiencing, or maybe that was said out of fear or that was said out of a belief that I need to get rid of because that belief no longer serves me. That belief does not serve the light. So I am going to release this belief because it is causing interference with my ascension and my growth and my ability to anchor and hold love. Because ultimately, if I want to ascend, I need to anchor unconditional love and become unconditional love. And if I want the world to ascend, I have to do my work first and make sure I am anchored in unconditional love. And then I can help heal those around me. And then the world can ascend. I have to open up my perception with an open, wide heart. The wider our heart, the wider our heart and more open our heart is, the bigger our perception. So instead of seeing maybe a homeless person or somebody, a stranger or somebody you know, maybe you just know them on social media and you just know what they present in social media, but you don't know, none of us know everything about one another. But when we can open our heart and feel or perceive or just even understand and say, hey, I'm seeing them do this behavior over here that is not of light or saying something, right? Or acting in a certain way, or maybe it's their lack of something, their lack of doing something or their lack of knowledge or something like that, right? Whatever it is, whatever your judgment that is that's coming up of what you see in that moment. 
we're seeing it like this, right? A snapshot. It's like an edited video, okay? We see what others are showing us. What we don't see, we don't know. You don't know what you don't know. That's where unconditional love comes in. When we open our heart, we can kind of, not kind of, we can have compassion and understanding for, you know, maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe their job or their work is a certain type of work that has sort of programmed them in a sense to habitually do things in a certain way, you know, or pattern or programming. Maybe, you know, they were raised in a strict church, right? Maybe they were raised in a strict family. Maybe they were abused. Maybe they are being abused. Maybe they're going through dark night of the soul. Maybe they have addiction problems and they have ancestral addiction problems in their DNA, in their family structure, and they don't know anything else. Maybe they've never known love. Maybe they've never known love. Maybe they've never had a true mentor or teacher or a second chance given to them by anybody. Okay, we don't know. But what they're asking me to share, and I'm getting emotional, I feel like I want to cry, is that we have to embody unconditional love, period, and forgiveness. How is that person ever to heal or have a second chance? If we don't at least extend a hand and say, do you need help? Can I help you? Can I love you? Can I help heal you? What's going on? And listen, but we're afraid. We're afraid of what we might hear. We're afraid of what we might learn or know or what they might know. So they're asking us to listen our heart to listen to others to open our hearts to open our minds to open our souls and look at the world and at others kind of how God does how source does how Sophia does how mother father God does how the angels do how do they look at us Countless times I have gone through periods of clearing and purging and triggers have come up. Anger has come up. Doubt has come up. Fear has come up. And I've gotten my, mad at my um, my guide team. And it's like, leave me alone. You know, just, just leave me alone. Right now I want to be alone. And I go into my cave. I have an energetic cave, a dragon cave I go into with amethyst crystal all around. It's really my favorite place to go if I'm healing or kind of needing to uh, sort of unplug for a little while. Um, but I've gotten mad and angry and said, just back off right now. Because sometimes when you're hurting and you're feeling super, super sensitive, everything seems too bright. Everything seems too deep. Everything seems too harsh. Everything is overwhelming. Everything, everything is too much. And you can't handle it. You just got to shut down. You got to go into the cave. You got to unplug and turn off and say, just leave me alone for a little while. And that's perfectly okay. Compassion for self and love for self and forgiveness of self is imperative on this journey. Okay. It's imperative. So we all have those days. We all have to understand that others have those days. And again, we don't know what we don't know or what they're experiencing or feeling right now. Okay. We all put up this image, you know, that we want others to see on social media. Look at me being successful. Look at me knowing this. Look at me doing this. Look at me, whatever it is. Um, and sometimes, you know, are very afraid to be vulnerable or open or really raw or honest. Um, because we can only show a certain amount. You know. That's a personal choice. Um, anyway, where was I going with this? I got a little bit lost. Um, <sighs> lost my train of thought. <sighs> so when we are going through whatever it is that we're going through, our healing, our purging, or when others are going through that, 
we give them space, we extend compassion, we extend forgiveness, we can offer help if you feel guided. Um, you can say, hey, I'm here for you. Do you need anything? Are you okay? Um, but we don't know what we don't know. And really, if we're going to change the world, if we're going to ascend, we have to embody that love and the unconditional love and the forgiveness, the compassion, the empathy, the understanding that there's a lot we don't know. And we heal this world with love. We bring that darkness into light by loving it. We don't squash it in a box and ignore it. We bring it back with love. Are there some instances in which there may be too much darkness and it just needs to simply be return to the light, to be transmuted, to be dealt with in whatever way that means and, and, and looks. Yes, is what I'm getting. Yes. There are times when that light is extinguished. But many times, God, Source, the angels, see in all that spark that's there. As long as that spark of light is in a soul and is there, they will do everything they can to rehab that soul, that person, to bring them back. Um, and another factor that Yeshua wanted me to point out was understanding the difference between somebody who truly is dark with a dark intent versus somebody experiencing a moment of time, a day, an hour, a minute of whatever it is that's perceived or maybe judged as dark. Um, it is a moment of time. Their intent is love. Their intent is integrity. It's heart-centered. It's heart-based. They're connected to the light, to source, to divine. They might be having, again, that bad period of time. The word spell wants to come up. Bad spell. That can happen too, unfortunately. <sighs> um, to have spells on, um, there are people that do that. And even a spell can be cast even inadvertently, accidentally, even just by words that we say. Um, saying harmful words towards another. Um, attacking, you know, saying, I hope this never, you never blah, blah, blah. Or I hope this, you know. That's casting a spell. So we can ask the angels to come in and clear us, to bring the light in, to clear us of all attacks and spells and clear energy. We can pray for others that, you know, um, if we see somebody acting out of how we normally see them, and it's like, that's not their normal self. Like, um, again, we don't know what we don't know. Pray for them. Ask for healing. Ask the angels to come in. Ask for cleansing and purification of their energy. Bring in violet flame and help them transmute whatever it is that they might be going through, right? Bring that light. Bring more light to them. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's one of my favorite sayings. They need, they're dirty from the garden. Throw them in the shower and give them a shower. Be the help. Be the answer. Be the love that comes in. Be the one that comes in to offer a hand or or a prayer or sending them some love and light or, or asking, are you okay? And little by little, when we embody this approach in life, again, whether it's with a family member, a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, a stranger, somebody in the news, somebody in government, doesn't matter. Because there's a lot of chatter about that too, right? In governments and who's good, who's bad. Is it reversed? Is it not? There's so much chatter and discussion. 
and so much duality. And ultimately, and I'm not perfect, none of us are, but I do my best to take, remind myself to take a higher perspective of trying to see both sides. And I ultimately just pray for the highest good of all, whether it be a person, a family, a government, a institution, a country, it doesn't matter. We pray for the world. We pray for the highest good of all. Please heal this XYZ for the highest good of all. That takes away all judgment. You're not saying, help this person do this. Or please help clear this person out of da 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 da. That's a judgment. Good or bad, it's a judgment. It's interfering. We're not meant to be interfering. We're meant to just be holding the light and bringing more light and love into the world and leading by example. So how can we embody forgiveness and unconditional love and compassion so that we lead by example and others see and that becomes a domino effect? If we start to judge and put people in categories of good, bad, light, dark, duality, we're only perpetuating duality and slowing the ascension process down. So to have the answer is to know yourself, to know your mistakes, to be honest with yourself, to love and forgive yourself, and then extend that to everybody. Not asking you to agree with somebody you might not like or you don't agree with their actions. Okay, so that person did something really, really awful and tragic. Yes, they did. Was it right? No, we're not saying, you know, that it's right. For whatever reason things happen, whether they're playing a role or whether they're acting because they have been interfered with energetically or spiritually. There's a lot of factors at play here, guys, that I don't want to get into here. A lot of influencing factors external to us that are no fault of anybody's own. There's a lot. And again, we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what's influencing somebody's mental status. Some of these beliefs, some of these perceptions, we don't know what they've been programmed with from school, from church, from family, from media, from anything. But it's not right to categories and judge everybody this, 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 this. It is what it is. Everybody has a unique experience. Everybody. There's going to be many that we align with in similarities identify with many we don't it doesn't matter it doesn't matter we're all human we're all here to learn and to grow on a soul level many of us are here to bring light and to remind the world what unconditional love is Christ consciousness is what this is about what is Christ consciousness not necessarily being Christian, but it can be. But it's the act of forgiveness, the act of unconditional love. It is becoming love. It is becoming unconditionally loving. Do you have to be Christian and religious to be Christ conscious? No. It is about embodying love. It doesn't matter what your belief set is or if you're a starseed or pagan or just a human. Any religion, it doesn't matter. What matters is what you embody on a day-to-day -day basis. Not any label, not any category, is do you embody unconditional love and forgiveness and compassion for one another? Can you anchor more light and extend that to others? Can you love and forgive those that maybe many would hate? 
I forget what the saying is in, in uh, one of the sayings in the Bibles, but it is something along the lines of something that Jesus had said of, um, well, there's a few. One is what, don't judge the splinter in another when you need to take the plank out of your own eye. You know, plank meaning big piece of wood versus a sliver. Sometimes we tend to judge the sliver in another and fail to see the plank in our own eye. And, Je and Joshua, Joshua, his message was at the time to his, as he taught his apostles, to look at your own self first before you judge others. Okay. And there was another one that was trying to pop in my head. Um, there's many analogies and parables he taught. Um, it's, it's, I'll retrieve it. I'm trying to remember what it is. I can't remember at the moment. There was another one. Um, but you get the message. Um, and that's why I wanted to come on. So they really do ask us to soften our hearts and bring an anchor in more love. Um, and to be forgiving. Think about how much we can change the world. Think about lifting and supporting one another up. Maybe that person just needs to know what love is and forgiveness is and unconditional love is and compassion is. Maybe they need a second chance or third chance. God has unlimited chances. Why can't we do that? You know, we say, well, we embody God, goddess. We are God, goddess. Yeah, we are. But that means to be unconditionally loving like God. That means to know your God powers and strength like God. That means to be forgiving and loving and compassionate and give second, third, fourth, fifth chances. Does that mean you allow an abusive um, or neglectful partnership in your life to continue? No. Sometimes love is setting healthy boundaries and self-love first and doing what's best for you. So no. Okay, understand the difference, right? Um, but it means ultimately embodying love and forgiveness and compassion for yourself and for others. And practicing this every day with every interaction that you have. And when you have an interaction or an observation, whether it's on the news, family, neighbor, social media, a network of sorts, when you find yourself falling into judgment saying, oh, they're this, they're that, they're this, they're that, they're not doing this, and your ego is coming through, right? It's your ego self doing that. When you catch yourself doing that, self-check, pause, take a break, ask for guidance, go back to your heart, sink back into your heart and take some deep breaths and ask your higher self, your guides, God, source, please help me see and understand this person, this situation from your perspective. Please help me to have forgiveness for this person or situation or group. Please help me to extend them love and light. Please help me to be compassionate. Please help me to be patient. Please help me to be safe. Please help the situation or person heal for their highest good. Please surround them in light. Please keep me safe if that's needed. Please show me what I need to do for my own healing, if that's needed. Please show me where I need to practice more self-love and forgiveness and be more heart-centered and less ego-centered. Please remind me when I'm coming from ego or the lower chakras like root chakra, which can be anger, fear, distortion, solar plexus, control, manipulative behavior. These are dysfunctional patterns of those chakras. Dysfunctional sacral chakra would be dysfunctional sexual behavior. Okay. 
so many factors affecting this, guys. So many. And again, we don't know what's entangled in that person energetically. We don't know. What patterns, what templates, what programs, implants, hooks, entities, anything. I, when I'm, I'm an energy healer and when I do healing, I remove and clear programming beliefs, remove hooks, leashes, implants, programs, entities. I remove all of these things. And yeah, really good people have really crappy stuff happen to them and or things put in them to no fault of their own. This is what being a healer is. To help them become more light, more love, more aligned with source, with their higher self, to give them more chances to succeed in the best way possible for the life. That's what... I help do, and that's what being a healer is. It's helping somebody else have success and see their light and embody love in whatever way that looks, and that's what I do. Whew, I'm just feeling a lot of energy. I'm just seeing if there's anything else I wrote in my little notes before. We save the world by forgiveness, forgiving the dark, and love it back to light. That's what I had written. Could you imagine, I mean, if we just did that, to just sit in a peace circle holding hands with those you've judged um we can do this energetically. You can visualize. Maybe there's a group or your family or world leaders or anybody. We can do so much healing and we could just literally put those who maybe are struggling in darkness or distortion or just take all the government leaders or take all of your family or take whatever. See them in a circle. Surround them with love. And ask for healing for the highest good. That's how we help the world. We don't help the world or help another person through judgment, through extreme barriers, through locking them out, through blocking, through judging, through censor censorship. Um... We don't help. We see and acknowledge, okay, they're different than me. Their path is different. Everybody's path is different than you. Everybody's path is different than mine. I never expect anybody to be exactly like me or to agree on everything. The world would be boring, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, it's just really about having this healing in the world and bringing the healing energy back and they're also reminding me um this one last thing and i'll wrap up i'm at 43 44 44 minutes exactly um there is a tribe in africa this was a post post on facebook i had remember seeing where when somebody is, has behaved bad when they've acted out when they've been maybe depressed or doing bad behavior. They don't judge them. They don't shun them. They don't kick them out. What do they do? They wrap them in a big hug of love. They put them in the middle and they surround them and they sing to them and they love them and they heal them and they hold them and they support them through whatever it is they're going through and say, we're gonna love you more because the people that are hurting and attacking and doing bad things are hurting. They just need more love. They just need more love. What is making them behave in such a way? 
how do we change the world? By more love. By us doing it first. Each one of us. Not by judging, but by being love. So that's the message today. And I just really want to try to shift things in the community, in the world, in the light worker community, in families, in government, in anything. And just really do a big self-check of where have I not been loving? Where have I been judgmental? And soften your heart, soften your soul, soften the barriers, open your heart. Because we do those things out of fear. Okay? We do those things out of fear. One thing begets the other. More love begets more love. Anchoring and holding more light begets more light. Anchoring and holding and having more forgiveness for others brings more forgiveness for the world. It's a domino effect. Everything we do is a domino effect. We know that energetically, right? 100 monkey effect. So, first do your own work. We each do our own work. And share this message. Share this video. Share it. Share it. Share it. Share it. Embody it. Become it. Express it. Lead by example. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. To infuse the communities, families, workplace with more forgiveness, with more compassion, with more light, with more love, with a different approach, with a different way of doing things. It doesn't mean we submit to everything. It means we say, hey, you know what? Let's try it this way. Let's maybe not talk about them that way. Why don't we look at a different approach? Why don't we look at how we can help those that are struggling versus just saying, you know, tag with you? What if God did that to us? To heck with you. Boom, there goes earth. Bye. What if that happened to us? How many times have we screwed up and the angels and God and divine is right there? And we need to do that for each other. Because that's why we're here. That's why we're here. All right. I know it feels like kind of a bit of a heavy message. We're at 48 minutes. Ah, magic number. <laughs> I have to do a whole video on the number 48 another day. Um, yes. Sophia and Yeshua feel complete. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, please comment. Please share. I feel it's a really important message and, and I hope you feel the purity and the integrity and the love through these words, through my heart, through Yeshua and Sophia speaking through me. Um, yeah, so I'm just doing my best to just be a channel of light for them to come through and speak through me. I'll be doing more of this type of video. Um, that's why it's a little bit longer because I have to slow, <sighs> slow down my speech so I allow their words to come through me as I channel for you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And may God bless you all. Thank you. I love you. And please sign up, like, and share. Please. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.